you know, the police officers also have to um, get a little bit out of that trench-like mentality uh, that they should always be paranoid, that they should always be on guard and on the defense. So the problem lies with what's going on with them internally. And I know that this is a big taboo issue you know, with law enforcement, but they need to be able to process these feelings. And they need to, they need to be able to process these thoughts. There's been a lot of talk in, you know, in, in this conference about, um, about bias. Well, how do you get rid of bias? You don't get rid of it by going to a one-day workshop on cultural sensitivity. It doesn't, you know, you don't undo years of socialization and reinforced beliefs. Uh, you don't undo, un, you don't undo that that quickly. I actually have found it interesting in working with kids in the juvenile justice system, uh, in talking about race and law enforcement and and, and inequality, and. You would think, you know, that, for example, African-American kids would say that it's the white cops that are racist. And actually, I most of them will say the black cops are worse. <laughs> and I've heard Latino kids say the same thing about Latino officers, too. That This is when I was still back in Los Angeles. And I found that really interesting because you would think, you know, the opposite. You, you would think that there would be this idea, but... Um, and the same also goes with the Border Patrol. I think, you know, that catches them off guard. Like, you should be able to empathize, you know, with me because we're the same race. But many of them don't. So I think, you know, that there's something more there. Uh, it, it, there's something more than just the racism that we should focus on as to what is it, you know, that's causing uh, this friction, you know, the, these clashes. Well, I think one way to start building trust between police departments and the community is for the police to be around uh, in opportunities where there isn't an arrest that needs to be made or a, a conflictive, you know, t tense situation. Um, I think some examples that have been tried uh, and true have been, for example, like the National Night Out. Uh, where the police come into the community and, and they participate uh, in, in an event where the community is also participating. They, they work together, they organize together, they get to deal with each other on different terms. particularly for children who, especially now, thanks to technology, they have access to these images that can be very negative about what's going on with the police in, in, around the country and in, in their communities. And so I think it's important to have something to counterbalance those negative images and these perceptions, you know, that uh, people in the community may have. I am very concerned about how militarized uh, some police departments are becoming. Uh, the 1033 program and all of this equipment that was given you know, to many police departments, I, I have heard uh, some people in the police force say, we are outgunned, we are outnumbered, we are we're being attacked with military-grade weapons, so therefore we need military. It's a rhetoric that sounds very much like war to me. And having come from a country, having survived a war, that's scary. And I hope people in the United States take a step back as to where this is going. And, and law enforcement also takes a step back. Um, do, you, do you really want to be the ones that set the stage for what's beginning to look like a civil war in the United States.